Hi, I'm Kyle Kittleson with MedCircle, joined today with double board certified psychiatrist, Dr. Dominic Sportelli. I know this is not your first time watching our videos on YouTube, so why not go ahead and subscribe and give this a thumbs up. When you support this mental health educational channel, it helps us provide content like this for you. So thanks for your support. Dr. Dom, you've done a few series for us, one of which is on bipolar disorder, and another one is on ADHD, two uh, you know, mental health conditions that we hear a lot about, but two that are often confused and unfortunately misdiagnosed. I hope you can clarify the differences for myself and our viewers in this video. Let's start with getting really clear about what bipolar disorder is as it uh, compares to what ADHD is. Yeah, so bipolar disorder is what we call an affective disorder. It's a mood disorder. Bipolar is a, it's a dysregulation of mood. So when people have various types of bipolar disorder, and there are various subtypes like bipolar two and, you know, uh, rapid cycling bipolar and things like that. But when people have bipolar disorder, they usually experience manic episodes, right? And manic episodes are basically these episodes anywhere from four to seven days where you're speaking really fast and you can't concentrate and you could be irritable and impulsive and grandiose and doing things that you normally wouldn't do, getting yourself into trouble. That's the most important thing is that it's not a positive thing in your life. And then you either come back to a level state or you can go into what's called a, a depressive state or a dysthymic state. So they have these ups and downs, not necessarily in that order, but it's an affective disorder, meaning it's really a disorder of mood regulation. And now more than ever, we realize that, you know, this is a very organic uh, disorder, meaning there's heritability, there's genetics to it. Um, and we're sort of kind of getting an understanding of some of the neurochemistry behind it as well. But, but the most important distinction here is that bipolar disorder is a mood disorder, mm. right? ADHD is not. ADHD is not a mood disorder. ADHD is difficulty processing information and maintaining attention and focus. Uh, the problem is, is that a lot of the symptoms overlap. And if you're not a careful clinician, you could jump to conclusions pretty quickly and diagnose one for the other, or, you know, either way. Um, and that's not good because the treatment is very different. So hopefully this will clear up some of those problems. You know, I, I, I might, this might be a little off, but I think if I'm remembering correctly, around two thirds, maybe it's three fourths of people who were diagnosed with ADHD in childhood years grow out or find ways to manage or treat their ADHD in such a way that they no longer experience those symptoms. And so to put it very plainly, and of course not medically 100% accurate, 75% of the people from my understanding don't have ADHD as an adult when they were diagnosed with it as a child. Regardless if that's 75% or 60 or whatever, my understanding as well is that with bipolar disorder, once you receive that accurate diagnosis, you are more likely to be treating that and managing those symptoms for the rest of your life. Is my understanding correct? Yeah, yeah. And, you know, there's, there are a lot of reasons why, you know, people tend to, quote unquote, grow out of attention deficit hyperactivity disorder. They can be treated very, very well, where the symptoms are just almost non-existent. People with ADHD can learn you know, how to sort of live with ADHD in a yes. more productive manner, right? Um, because it's considered like a cognitive, a neurocognitive disorder. It's, it's, a, it's a disorder of like the frontal lobes of the brain where you make decisions and executive decisions and, and uh, you know, sort of organize things in your brain. So you can absolutely learn uh, ways to live a much better life with ADHD. Unfortunately, with bipolar disorder, although it is treatable, you know, I, I certainly don't want to say that it's not treatable. It's absolutely treatable. Mm -hmm. With the right medicines, you can have less episodes, less manic episodes, less depression, and again, live a relatively normal life with the appropriate treatment. But, you know, bipolar disorder can be something that can really lead to a really, really challenging life if it's not treated appropriately and tends to be lifelong. Yes. Our founder, the founder of MedCircle, mm -hmm. is a survivor of bipolar disorder. Uh, he's very open about that. And it is a, uh, a night and day difference to hear him tell stories about when he was living with untreated bipolar disorder to when he finally found the right 
treatment and therapy to manage it correctly. And uh, that night and day difference really illustrates to me not only the power of the disorder, but the power of getting educated and finding the right uh, resources for you because life can uh, get back in your control when you understand what you're doing and why you're doing it. Let's talk about then the potential of having a dual diagnosis of bipolar disorder and ADHD. How common is that? Yeah, you totally can. You totally can. Um, get this 60 to 70% of people with bipolar disorder also have ADHD. And 60 I, that, to yeah. 70% also. Yeah. Have ADHD. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. And that's, and that's a distinct thing. So, you know, don't forget when, when you're having episodes of mania, you cannot concentrate well. When you're having episodes of depression, you're not concentrating well. But when you look at the diagnostic manual and you look back at childhood and attention and concentration difficulties and, and all the things that we check down the list for like a diagnosis, people, 60 percent of people with uh, bipolar disorder will also meet the criteria for attention deficit hyperactivity disorder. Um, the other way around, it's a little less, you know, if you're diagnosed with ADHD initially as a child, um, I believe it's about 20% of those people may be bipolar as well. Uh, but, uh, but if you have bipolar disorder, it's very likely that you're also going to have symptoms very consistent with ADHD. The use of medication to treat both of those disorders is prevalent. And while some therapies can be very helpful, a lot of people I know are medicated who are living with bipolar disorder and people I know who are living with ADHD are medicated. How would somebody use medication if they have that dual diagnosis? It seems like it would be too difficult. You can't give a yeah. stimulant to someone who's prone to manic episodes or can you? Yeah, it's really challenging. And, and you know, there are no um, always and nevers, right? There, everyone is a spectrum and everyone responds differently to, to medications. So although you have to be extra cautious in somebody that has a mood disorder with, with things like stimulants, there are people that are treated effectively with stimulants. But you, as a clinician, as a doc, you always have to say to yourself, you know, I have to be incredibly careful. I'm not going to push somebody into a manic episode with a stimulant or God forbid, a psychosis with a stimulant. Mm. So what you're going to do in these cases is try to manage the symptoms of the ADHD with really good therapeutic intervention, really good lifestyle changes, um, organiza organizational skills, and get the symptoms of bipolar under control, which are likely contributing to some of that attention and concentration stuff. So that's really going to be the mainstay of treatment. Um, but sometimes you can, I mean, sometimes you can absolutely help somebody with, uh, you know, um, concomitant ADHD by giving a little bit of a stimulant, although with a lot of caution. If parents and caregivers are able to get to notice these signs in their children, how could they, and I know they cannot make a diagnosis, but how could they bring accurate uh, notes and feedback to the provider? The reason I'm bringing this up is because ADHD, I mean, people go to that real quick. I hear mm -hmm. so many parents, well, maybe it's ADHD, maybe it's ADHD. And they could be missing some crucial components that could make it something else like bipolar disorder. Mm -hmm. So how can parents really track their child's behavior and observe with a critical mind and bring that information to the right provider? Yes, yeah, so there's a couple of, you know, I was thinking um, before we were speaking tonight of some, some sort of bullets to make a real significant distinction between ADHD and uh, bipolar disorder. So something really important to consider is that you know, ADHD is seen much younger in most cases, you know, you're going to see, you can see ADHD because again, it's a neurocognitive issue. It's something that, you know, is, is the way that your brain functions from a very young age on that cognitive spectrum, right? So you can see it at a much younger age, five, six, seven years old. It's, it's not very likely that you're going to see true bipolar, although you could, it's, you're not going to very much see that true strong bipolarity in young kids, or it would manifest very different. So, so I think an important thing is it's not really noted early like ADHD or bipolar is not really, really noted super early like ADHD. And, and keep in mind that like bipolar disorder is noted to be much more chronic and debilitating, right? Um, ADHD is almost circumstantial. So when we're talking about, and, and what I mean by that is 
the mood dysregulation component, right? The ups and the downs, the depressions or the anxieties or the frustrations or the, you know, the acting out. When you're looking at ADHD, you could probably trace it to something circumstantial. There is frustration because the child or the individual is having a difficult day. They're having a difficult concentrate, a difficult time concentrating. Where when you see bipolar disorder and you analyze their moods, sometimes there is no real rhyme or reason. It's just, they go into these phases, whether it's depressive or manic, and there's no real trigger. It just sort of happens. Mm. And once that happens, it lasts. It's much longer. When people have these mood episodes in ADHD, it's sort of just up and down. And, and again, you could sort of trace it to something. Um, the other thing is the family history of bipolar is a little bit more significant. So you'd really take a good genetic history and hereditary history. Um, things that you would not see in ADHD is, is like psychosis, uh, which you certainly can see in bipolar disorder and mania. Things that you would not see in ADHD are um, symptoms of like grandiosity, which can be very common in bipolar disorder when people are manic. And the other point is, is once you start treating someone in an ongoing linear fashion, people with bipolar disorder respond to mood stabilizers very well, where someone with ADHD really doesn't respond to mood stabilizers, right? So there's just a couple of things just to think about either if your, your child or your loved one is being treated for one or the other, if, if you have question about whether or not they've been um, sort of um, diagnosed properly, these are things to think about. There are two great series that come to mind on watch.medcircle.com. One is about ADHD and it's focused on the younger population children. That is hosted uh, by Dr. Dom, well, hosted by me, but <laughs> Dr. Dom is the uh, doctor in that series. Then Dr. Judy Ho has a series on adult ADHD. I'll link to both of those below this video, but those are great series to check out to get really informed on uh, these disorders and these topics. Uh, Dr. Dom, what is the likelihood of somebody being able to catch bipolar disorder very early on and find a treatment or therapy that works and works long-term? Oh, I would totally, well, so catching it early on is really a keen eye and good family support and um, just sort of a good supportive network around you, right? And that's what this is. This is like, you know, education and empowerment, right? It's kind of what we do here at MedCircle. So, you know, being educated and understanding what you're looking for will catch it early. It's, you know, you're more sensitive to catch something early. And the earlier you catch any of these psychiatric illnesses, um, it gives you sort of a head up on treatment and prognosis. Um, but again, just like we talked about previously, I, I want to encourage everyone that, you know, for bipolar disorder, the treatments work, you know, these treatments work and there are a lot of different options. So mood stabilization and the proper therapy, you know, absolutely help people with bipolar disorder. And ADHD is probably one of the most treatable um, cognitive issues that we have in neurology and psychiatry. I mean, we see, we see treatment, you know, responses 70 to 80% you know, um, as far as like a response rate. So, so the prognosis is really good for something like ADHD if you catch it. And remember, if you catch something like ADHD early, you're preventing a lot of the frustration and issues that sort of manifest from having ADHD, like increased use, substance yes. use and yes. maybe getting depressed or, you know, because you feel inadequate. So catching that early is really important for your self-esteem and self-confidence too. Yeah. And listen, it's not just all about treating with medicines too. There's a lot of lifestyle changes that you can do to um, treat something like ADHD. With bipolar disorder, you know, again, same thing. You know, if you can catch these manic episodes and level off mood, people can lead a very normal, productive and happy, oh, awesome yeah. life. Oh yeah, for sure. Uh, one of the first series that we filmed outside of California was with you and it was on ADHD. And I honestly sat down thinking, I'm going to talk to another doctor who thinks like ADHD is this, you know, like really real thing. Cause I was a doubter. I thought, nah, ADHD is for like parents who can't, you know, parent their kids or a college student who can't, you know, get it together and study for a test. And that series, you, I mean, I even said it in the series. I said, there's now there is no doubt in my mind how real, how impactful this is. Mm -hmm. uh, it, it's so eye-opening to fully understand 
not just what happens in these disorders, but where they come from and how they impact all areas of our life. Um, I think let's, uh, yeah, we can do it. Let's uh, throw to an inside look to that series and uh, or at the end of this video, we'll do that. And Dr. Dom, I'll see you tonight for our live panel. If you would like to see Dr. Dom, ask some questions as well as with our other doctors, use the links below to register. We'll see you there this evening. Dr. Dom, thanks for being here to talk to us about bipolar disorder and ADHD. Thanks for letting me have the opportunity to do so. Of course. All right, here's an inside look into Dr. Dom's series. And remember, whatever you're going through, you got this. When you're dealing with children, you see a lot of behavioral problems and parents will bring their kids to you because they just don't know what to do anymore because they're having trouble at school and having trouble at home. And they're having all these behavioral issues. And I just felt as though it's so important to get the proper diagnosis to treat these kids. And I saw so many kids misdiagnosed, overdiagnosed, and I really, really wanted to focus on this because I sincerely believe that if you get the appropriate diagnosis when you're a child, it's gonna help you throughout your entire life. Key word there being appropriate diagnosis. Appropriate yes. diagnosis, absolutely. I feel <clears throat> like in any mental health <clears throat> topic we've discussed thus far on Bad Circle, ADHD has to be one of the most controversial because so many people believe that we are over-diagnosing kids with ADHD. Yeah.